Welcome to the Big Motor Small Blade Podcast. I'm Seth Dolby, joined, of course, by Buddy Pulley and the returning Chase, a.k.a. Chuck. Uh, how Dude, art we thought, thou? We thought we lost you to Nashville, bro. You did. We I, thought you got carried away in that tarp. I should have found my way back. I should have found shit. my way back. What yeah. are you talking about? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. We, yeah thought, we thought you were prepping for your Gibbs ride next year. What, man? Can I say? I was really disappointed to find out that wasn't happening. Right opportunities. Think- Dude, actually, my grandfather, it's just when forgetting who was commented on that post. Uh, congratulations on your Joe Gibbs opportunity. My grandfather called me and asked for the room. <laughs> he what, the fuck, what the hell would they possibly hire you for? Like some kind of media role. He didn't understand the joke. Yeah, I'm sure. He didn't Chris or Bell's got that handled. Yeah, clearly. Um, anyway, so very know. true. Uh, so we all joyfully watched a Pocono race this weekend. Um, it was certainly that a Pocono race. It was certainly a Pocono <laughs> race of all, of all time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't even know where to where to begin with this one. To be completely honest with you, because uh, Chuck pop quiz: What kind of triangle was Pocono? Oh, my head. Dad, gum it! I used to be good at math. Dad, gum it. We got that is a not a type of, that is not a type of triangle. Seth, you know, I right? actually know this. What the hell? I'll it's, give you, uh, give you a three a more seconds. It's isosceles. Yeah, it's an isosceles triangle, yeah. Chuck. Yeah. That is a big word, buddy. I, I was going to say something, thank but you. I forgot this is... I may not be able to spell <laughs> disappointment, but I could say isosceles. Yeah, that's okay. It's, um, a, tr- it's a what? It's a triangle. Wow. Really? Yeah. Now, Chuck, how many turns? Actually, it's does a triangular it's a triangular oval. Well, okay, if we're going based on the math that the rest of the NASCAR tracks use. Well, it's okay, so it this five. is a matter this is a matter this is a yes, matter of opinion. It has five. Yeah, you think it has five. How many you think what five? It has five. It has three. I don't know. What shit. Turns I don't know. Everybody said Carl Edwards said there were six and he was oh, an idiot. So I'm sorry if you modeled turn two after Indianapolis, then that's not two turns. Well, yeah, that well, oh, uh, that's what I'm saying. Like okay. they're three, three turns. Uh-huh. Every they, other track, one and back three to would dinner be dinner with Chuck. They modeled Mil yeah, dinner with Chuck. They have burrito uh-huh. night. They got, uh, they modeled Milwaukee. Wait, no, they modeled turn three after three and four at Milwaukee, so that's two corners. Two corners. Uh, I believe at Trenton, it's one and two. Yeah, but Milwaukee is a 180-degree corner that adds up to two corners, whereas the turn three at Pocono is not 180 degrees. So that argument could so be made. four and a half. What do you want? But the way you drive it is absolutely you apex one and then you know have to pick up an apex on the exit. That's two corners. You got this I, right not so bad. This is all we have to talk about. I mean, yeah. Um all right. That, so <laughs> what? So last thing on this. I I don't know, dude. Like with Corey LaJoy aiming for turn one or two. <laughs> he was aiming for, aiming for the highway. Oh, okay. He was aiming for Kyle Bush's back bumper. That's but, true. Um Yeah, we just, so anyway, we just want to block him. I'm of wanna... the opinion that Pocono has been significantly worse since we started cutting horsepower down. Um, I'm sure yeah. I'm in the minority. No, I mean, you're right. No? Okay. In, in every aspect, it's been not as good. I thought uh, the they two look next... like they go slow at every Pocono. Of the sport. Uh, yes. I thought the two next-gen races before this one weren't the worst Pocono races I've seen. I thought 2022 one... was fine. I thought last year was really boring. And this to be one, honest, I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, people yeah. just remember last year fondly, I guess, because it got interesting at the very end. To that's, me, probably, I, that's what I think. Yeah, um, I don't commit too much memory to a poke in a race. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was. I don't get too hung up on this. I mean, it's Pocono. It it is what it is. 
it's been kind of like this forever. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't feel uh, like it's been like this forever, though. <laughs> Pocono has historically, even when it was better, it was still in the bottom echelon of yeah. racetracks on the schedule. And I feel like it is it is holding strong at that at that uh position. Pocono that is fair. Is- a necessary racetrack for the tough food. The cherry food. I did. Pocono is a necessary racetrack for the Cup Series to go to based on its location in the United States and the fact that they need a race somewhere up there and the track is unique. It's not expected to have good racing. It's just expected to exist and have good fan turnouts and that's what it does and we deal with it and we sit on our couch and we be bored and sometimes take naps during these races and we move on to next week. We've always done it. We always will. Problem with poker though is it always it opens up the opportunity for strategy, but uh, it it rec- like in order for it to be interesting, the strategy's got to play out all the way to the end, and they almost never do. They always kind of either somebody short pits or goes long after stage two, and they just didn't exist. Forty to go, we got we we've got our winner decided. So the other problem is when a strategy is starting to. Uh, show itself a NASCAR race breaks out. Um, yeah, that too. Aided, of course. NASCAR always. Hmm. NASCAR and specifically Spire Motorsports employ a caution clock, and that is why. Yeah, this yeah. is true. Um, NASCAR you know, does employ Corey LaJoy, though. To be fair, that's wow. Yeah, um, yeah, dude, Corey LaJoy sucks so bad. He's getting beat by us in podcast rankings, according to our friend Cook Virus. Right. Hey, we'll take it, man. Legitimate source. That is that is very legitimate source. Very legitimate um, source. Yeah, I guess let's uh let's um let's go ahead and talk about that. I mean, it's the one of two things we got to talk about. What, Chuck? Since I'm almost done, I'm gonna rate today's dinner with Chuck eight out of ten. It was pretty solid. Moving on, dude. I'm gonna get some Wendy's saucy nugs after we get done with this. I've never had. Sure. Okay. I'm gonna try them. Yeah. Yeah, if you're coming to Indy, you know, I have a gift card and Seth and I are going to go nuts with it. <laughs> anyway, okay. Corey LaJoy. Speaking of nuts. <laughs> I'm flashed. Um, uh, Seth, you wanna you wanna kick this off? You always have something prolific to say. <laughs> I wouldn't call most of the things I say prolific, but um I will say that Corey LaJoy is Maybe, just maybe, well, Cody Ware came back. Until then, he's the worst NASCAR driver in a NASCAR Cup Series right now. Well, he has almost 100 more starts than the next closest guy to him in starts that doesn't have a win. I mean, I'm not worried about him winning a race, to be completely honest. No, That's- I'm just saying that shows how bad he is. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I don't think that I I like shitting on Corey LaJoy as much as the next guy on this podcast, but I don't feel like that's the proper way to go about this because he always has been in these middling bad it's tier rides. It's funnier though, and that it's doesn't funny, fit my but, narrative. Hang on, hang on. It is funny. I agree. I don't disagree with you, but there are plenty of other ways to judge Corey LaJoy that don't involve that. So Justin like, Haley was in the same car, actually a worse version of that same car, and figured out a way to win. I don't care. Uh, look, I mean, Chase Elliott, you know what? I don't like the guy, but I, I'm starting to, uh, he's starting to come around the, the longer Corey with Joy continues to be a nutsack. I, I'm more, more and more grateful for that Atlanta race in 2022. Yeah, I mean... The thought of having to have been at the lone Corey LaJoy win is kind of <laughs> like disappointing. Yeah. Uh, but this is. Uh, yeah. I feel like um, it's second. worth noting that Corey, I, I'll double check this here in a second. I saw somewhere that Corey LaJoy has got like a combined six top tens across all three national series. Oh, he's only run a couple Xfinity races and a couple truck races. So. 
Okay, right. well, he's also a cup driver that goes and gets in good equipment. And then well, if we're going by Seth's logic, then Corey LaJoy could be a great race car driver, and he's just been in bad equipment. No, hang on. See, you didn't <laughs> let me finish. You didn't let me finish. So that's the funny thing about it is you can you can still you can ignore the fact he hasn't won because I don't think that's fair. Like I think if you put fucking Chase Elliott or anybody else in the Spire Seven car for as long as he's been in it, I don't think they've won either. Um, maybe a guy like Chase could pull one off at like a Daytona or something, but even then he's only won that race fucking never. So and you look at just the way he drives and and just a talent level over just dude, seriously, just take the last five weeks since fucking New Hampshire. He has just been on a collision course with literally everything, and he's just done it in the least tactile way possible. He has spun out under caution. He has spun out right after that. He's done it again. He wrecked Kyle Busch for nothing. I, th- I, you almost can't convince me it wasn't on purpose. Uh, he oh, it was something- definitely on purpose. Yeah, I mean it was. What did he? Do? Oh yeah, he spun out by himself at Chicago. Again, another talent driven track completely cleaned himself out he cleaned out brad at nashville he cleaned out brad at nash i could i knew there was another one in there Corey has been it literally you just take the opportunity he had a prime opportunity to win nashville and just totally flubbed the restart and ended up 25th it's true (laughs) it's 100 percent true Corey lajoy is unequivocally fucking terrible well here's here's another thing too about what you what you said about you know a driver you know like Chase Elliott we put it we'll just say an A level driver you put him in the Spire car they probably have a one I'm gonna refute that a little bit because as much as Corey wrecks I mean they, we hear it all the time with young drivers don't tear up their equipment that way where you have we can de- you know take it back to the shop and development a lot of time <laughs> I mean as much as Corey wrecks they're spending more time fixing his cars than they are developing. And I think, I think honestly, it reflects. Jay Smith seems like he's gotten a little bit better. Yeah, I think that car is a little bit different than the seven and the seventy-seven. Yeah, but Carson Osmar, I feel like he's been a little a tick worse than he was since Corey's gone on this run and wrecking. I think a lot of resources are being put towards fixing that seven car, and they're not being able to push that organization forward. Whereas I think if there was a better driver in there that could keep the equipment clean, probably Michael McDowell next year. Um, that uh, you know, it will it would push the organization further, and I just don't. That was one thing that you could say about Corey Joy a while back, at least a couple of years ago, is he took care of his equipment and we get the most out of it. Now it's he's become that guy, and he's become like every other underdog, like a Matt DiBenedetto or somebody like that, where he gets a little bit of a falling because he's an over underdog, and you know people people take notice of the things he does right. And he just blows his head off his shoulders. Corey has begun to like the smell of his own asshole so much that he just continues to spin around to get there. Okay, so what an auto. Holy shit. Since I've been gone for so long. Oh my God. I got a couple Corey LaJoy Nashville stories for y'all to add to this conversation. Oh, so gosh. Okay. All right. We're sitting there in the stands way up top on the front straightaway and whenever I don't know it was right after all the good cars ended up at the back and my buddy dude which time uh, right before Brad got right after Bell got run or right after Bell wrecked himself okay Evan says man we need another caution to get those guys back up there and I said well Corey LaJoy hasn't wrecked yet and then I kid you not two laps later he wrecks the six. And I was like, well, there's the there's the weekly Corey LaJoy caution right there. And then we get to the <laughs> end of the race, and Duke is like losing his mind. I don't know why. He's losing his mind at the top 10 that we had at one point in that sequence. Because, I mean, it was very um, – it was a top 10 of all time. And he's yeah, like – it was. <laughs> and Corey LaJoy is running eight. And he's like, dude – the top eight cars have a chance to win this race right now. So tell my buddy Luke, who had never been to a race before, and I was like, no, that's not true. He said, why not? I said, because Corey LaJoy is running eighth, and he stops, looks at the scoring pylon, looks Luke dead in the face, and says, the top seven cars have a chance to win this race right now. Yeah. And about 
yesterday. Dude, when did this all start? Does this all start at Nashville, like this run Corey's been on? No, no it started in New Hampshire. Oh, uh, New Hampshire. Yeah, I okay. remember Sorry, a lot. Uh, but like yesterday. I was going to say, maybe it was me. I had Chili's the day of Nashville. So. I'm going to like, I'm going to try and make this argument as proper as possible. Um, first of all, I'm with Seth. You can't convince me that he didn't wreck him on wreck Kyle Bush on purpose and shouldn't be sitting in, at home on his couch watching. Well, hang on. I don't want to be Hello. left out of the club. I think he definitely fucking wrecked Kyle okay. Bush on purpose. So, uh, we're all in agreement <laughs> um, on that. I think yeah, that he, got the big motor small oh, blades stamp of approval. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just, it's, and it's so, he does himself no favors when he gets out of the car. And like, if you're going to lie, but you can't own up to it. So if you're going to lie, make it a good lie. Don't be like, oh, well, second time he blocked, man, he just turned across my nose. Dude, show me the block. We'll look at a replay. I don't know what you're seeing that I'm not. Maybe, maybe he's got a special kind of special. I mean, dude, I kind of mind. get Corey. I do kind of get Corey's I argument. Get I, I, I kind of get Corey's argument because, you know, if I'm Corey LaJoy, everybody in front of me is a roadblock. Okay, so. And by everybody, I mean everybody's in front of me. <laughs> like, the worst part is he contradicts his own argument because in the same sense that he says, oh, well, the second time he blocked, he just turned across my nose. Then he sits there and says, I just planned on getting back in line. So did you plan on getting back in line or did Kyle Bush block you? Which one happened? Because in my, like, as we all agree, I mean, you Technically, both of them happened. Kyle did block him at one point, and Corey had a plan to get back in line. He had a plan to get back in line. It was yeah. coming hell or high water. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dude, did, I don't know where I saw this today. It may have been, I don't know if somebody was commenting on BBC's conversation about it or if BBC actually said it, but he said stacking race cars and turn long. Yeah, I was literally about to say something like that. Fuck. Damn. I was like, damn. Now, all right, hang on. I want to bring this up because for some Someone, reason this hang keeps on. getting brought up. Someone should deliver. <laughs> Never mind. That doesn't make you sense. Go Bam ahead, Seth. Can you get Bam L on that podcast? This podcast? No, that podcast that he does. Uh, so. I mean, we can get fan mail. If you guys want to send us shit, like fucking hey, DM me on by Instagram. The way, have you guys been doing the uh, questions? Sorry for uh, sorry to go on side the, tangent. You guys the been doing Q&A? Yeah. No, we have no. we, we did we it for question, two weeks. A couple, we had a question a couple weeks back that somebody asked us to explain the playoff system because they were confused. We never did it. Well, we yeah, have this little I, video called NASCAR for Rookies. Uh, so if you're that, curious. And we also said, because you weren't on that show, that uh, we would explain the playoffs until the playoff time came around. But also, yes, if you'd like to go find that video, it is the most popular on this channel. It's not a Shane Ben Gisbergen video. Um I was just making sure because I've been AFK for the past month. So AFK away from keyboard. Oh, okay. How old are you? I don't know, dude. <laughs> dude I, so thought, I thought you said JFK. I weekend. was like, <laughs> wrong weekend for that one, buddy. Um, yeah. Anyway, I want to bring up this other thing. Don't keep blowing my mind. I don't know. Oh, God dang it. Uh, anyway, uh, everyone keeps bringing up that, not everyone, I've seen it brought up that Kyle Bush also tried to get in line and wreck Chase Elliott to Darlington in 2020. And I'd like to refute the fact that those two incidents are not similar at all because... Yeah, Kyle Bush is good. Well, it, take all that out of it. Take who did it out of it or whatever. You can at least make the argument that Kyle actually did misjudge it because the entire outside line is moving at a lot quicker rate than he yeah. was on the bottom instead of Corey and Kyle's situation here where they're going virtually the same speed yeah i mean clearly well, not also, at some point but also Corey is catching kyle it yeah whereas the other one was it was whereas the darlington incident it was a misjudgment with one car is going forward one car is going backwards and it's just a matter of timing you know that and i forget this is, was, i mean he was trying to fit into a gap that they were yeah trying. Be, yeah, yeah exactly he was trying to block kevin harvick that fucking piece of shit um and you would know <laughs> 
Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's just, it's, I've, I've been on the, you know, a lot of people say they feel bad for Kyle Bush, and I was kind of like, well, some of the shit he did himself. I'm, I'm kind of feeling bad for the guy. I mean, he, like, like, one, you're back there with Corey LaJoy, too, to just get absolutely just destroyed by him. That's shit. Yeah. Like, someone take Kyle out to dinner. Like, it's just kind of at the not point the where Chili's, it's like, though. no, definitely not to Chili's. It's yeah. kind of at the point, though, where it's like, just, I don't really care necessarily what happens or where they run on the racetrack. It's just him getting out of the car and not caring or, you know, visually doesn't look like he cares. That's like, I don't know, it's just weird to see out of Kyle Bush. Oh, Kyle Bush? Yeah, out of I Kyle think Bush. He's human, dude. Oh, he's definitely fuming, but like before, there was no way he'd even be able to hold that in. And now he's just like, I'd like I think to think the drywall sponsors. service in his house is fucking destroyed right now. Probably. They just need to get him a drywall gym. Like instead of a punching bag, it's just drywall. He can, he can call Corey. That's where Corey uses it for his head. Did Corey's going to have to get that as a job here in a minute. Hopefully. Yeah. Did you guys see what Kyle said about Corey and, uh, the bullpen no i did not know i can go again i'll go fact check myself and make sure i'm not throwing kyle bush under the bus but pretty sure he called him a kamikaze i mean at least those guys had honor amongst their amongst their country i don't like cory like or does okay. um anyway uh are we done talking about cory joy Please, I, I'm done. okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, hang on. I got one more thing to say. Um, yeah. Shatters is way fucking better than Chili's. This is true, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Shatters it's fucking solid. slaps, dude. What? They have good salmon. Well, I mean, okay, a Chili's burger is pretty good. I mean, I I will agree. I do like a good Chili's burger. Chili's chips and ranch are fucking are are very good. Yeah. He almost said amazing, and then he realized they sponsored Corey LaJoy, and he took it back. Fuck, you guys want to go to Chili's? <laughs> anyway. Hey, I'll be up at the Wake County. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll burn down a Chili's. Good, by the way, nerd cluster plug. They're really good. I just hey, paid us a dime, a you fucking dick. Brands who don't pay us anything. Yeah, I don't know because I ate a whole bag of them. They were I said what do you like I wasn't more... wearing a cookout hat on this podcast last night. Or what on do you think? What do you think's more lucrative, sponsoring the Big Motor Small Boy podcast or Corey LaJoy? Believe it or not, he gets you a lot of TV time. That's true. Yeah, he wrecks every week. He's guaranteed okay. to put it on TV. Okay, I guess sure. that's I guess that's fair. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Okay. Um. Ryan Blaney won the race. I just watched some wine and his chits get sawed together in your head. This race was the biggest nothing mm. burger like ever. So I had to remember what the fuck else there was to talk about. Ryan Blaney picked up his 12th career win, um, mm. second at Pocono. Cool. Dude, the yeah. amount of people saying, the amount of people, I, I saw an article written today i don't remember who wrote it but they said is the 12 team in penske are they peaking too early are they peaking dude if they're peaking right now they're gonna be awful in the playoffs yeah well i like, mean they've been they're fine like they're good he's been pretty damn good the past little bit here sure. i mean you look at he won iowa he was good at new hampshire he was good at nashville like, could have won either of those races. It wasn't the fastest car in any of those races. No, they were good. Well, yeah, they yeah. were good, but they weren't the fastest yeah, so car. You can establish. I didn't you don't say, have to be the fastest yeah, guy. Got, yeah, well, I was just my, saying hang on, he's hang on, been that's, good. Hang on, that's my point, though. My point is... is that He's never been the fastest car, except for 2020 for a couple of weeks. Well, that's not true. They have been. They just never close it. But anyway... That's my point, though. That's they, fair. Yeah. If that's them peaking, whether or not they've won two races or whatever, if they have not been the fastest car in any of those races and they're peaking right now, they're going to be really bad in the playoffs. Yeah. And it's like exactly opposite of last year. I'd stop trying to guess at what people are going to do in the playoffs because, yeah. like, I mean, I, I'm completely wrong almost all all the time. 
So, I mean, I am also well, over the conversation just in general. Like they asked Alex Bowman, are you guys about to be championship contenders? And he's like, I hope. Like, what, is, what do you want him to say? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I said, um, I said that after Blaney won the Iowa, I said, keep it up, champ. And we'll give it to them. They, they have kept it up ever since Iowa. They've been in position to win some races if things go their way. You know, Gateway, obviously. And, you know, so I at least like the fact that he's more relevant than he was last year at this time. If he's going to be our defending champion and if people want to hype, hype Ryan Blaney up, then I at least want to see him, you know, get some results out of it. And it seems like he's getting results out of it. So, I mean, I'm, <clears throat> I think there is something to be said about the fact that this is, this is a big horsepower track and, you know, he's a, in a Ford and he was able to, to get the win. Um, so I'm sorry, I got distracted. Chuck just disappeared on us. Um, Chuck was frozen on me for like a solid five minutes, so I rebooted it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Basically. Anyway. Um, but is it, but anyway, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't really know. I don't know what to say about their championship hopes, but I, <laughs> I, I'm glad to see Ryan Boyd doing well. I'm not a fan of Ryan Blaney, but I'm glad to at least see if he's got to be shoved down our throat to at least see him doing something. Uh, is it my turn? I would imagine. Uh, I don't know. Dude, Chuck forgot I did the podcast, guys. I did. Well, I don't have anything to say. Like, Ryan Blaney won. I don't, I don't know. Like, congrats. At least he, like Buddy said, at least It was a strategy call that they didn't fuck up. Uh, the, that's there, true um i don't know i just have a hard time taking anything yep i know where <laughs> you couldn't pass the leader so yep. which yeah. is everywhere actually um and it sucks so i'm not gonna beat that dead horse today i'm just saying i don't have much to take from it because he could have been the th- 20th fastest car out there and in clean air nobody would have passed him so um so like what was that shit coming out of Ty Gibbs was exhaust <laughs> hey Steve Letard called a Yoohoo I used to love that when I was a kid he just ruined my childhood drink you used to love it I still uh, dude I get a Yoohoo once a week at least that's, things that's, terrible. My, little, that's my little Friday treat Tear my stomach up. I can't do it. Yeah. I know that I want one for a while now because if I, every time I see one, I'm going to think of Ty Gibbs' exhaust and I'm going to be like, never mind. Really? I thought you were really into Ty Gibbs' exhaust. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. Look, nothing right. happened in this race. I got to spice Fuck it me up. Somehow. Ask, I love Jesus. Um, <laughs> anyway. Oh, do it. That was weird. That thing just kind of like yeah, that was weird. That that, that was, just said I've that. never seen. <laughs> I've never seen. That was really weird. Too. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, never mind. <laughs> I'll tell you guys after the show. Well, all right. Now that we're done disappointing God, I've never seen a next gen <laughs> engine just grenade itself going through the gears on a restart. So that was interesting. I wonder if he money shifted it then. I was thinking the same thing actually. Yeah. Well, like during the race, and when I saw that, I was like, I wonder if Ty Gibbs just money shifted that thing. When's that some bitch gonna win? How do you money shift it with this? Like, how would you? I, hey, that? hey, I asked the question first. Anyway, good. I'm starting to think next year because that's kind of the trajectory a lot of guys have had. But <laughs> I'm starting to think that as well because he's not like. He's not. I uh, hope it's this he's year. Not so leading Chuck is laps. Wrong. He's not leading laps right now. No, he's not. He he's fast in qualifying. He'll run top ten, but he's he's not. You know. But now that we said that, he's gonna definitely win Indianapolis. I hope but, he um, wins a race that I'm not at, just so Chuck is wrong. But I don't kind of think it's going to happen. No. I Chuck. I did say in our season preview uh, thing, my bold take was that Ty Gibbs would not win a race this year. So, so far, I am looking pretty good. 
Well, I'm I'm starting to believe. I mean, Chuck's got a golden horseshoe stuck up his ass. Court Chuck could have said Corey LaJoy was going to win this year, and somehow, some way, hell would have frozen over. And I kind of want to test would... that theory just for science. Yeah, like I want Chuck pick him in Indianapolis. I'll pick him in Indianapolis. No, don't pick him in Indianapolis. Pick him in Daytona and just see what happens. Because Chuck, you... like you said, Chuck has the golden horseshoe right now. I just for science, I want to see if this happens. And yeah. we can't blame Chuck if if this happens. This is a group decision. We have to agree on this right now. This is a group decision to have Chuck pick Lajoie at Daytona. Daddy, look, you're, look, I'm I don't. Nah, I hang on, hang on, hang I on, hang somebody, on. I have I the audacity of you to think that little old Chuck over there has the power to make that fucking goddamn fucking abortion happen. Like, what if it did though? What if it did? I mean. I mean, you like, know what? that sounds like some Chuck magic to me. I mean, if I pick Corella Joy at Daytona and he wins, you better call Dale Jr. and tell him I'm the new NASCAR Jesus because I just made that happen. Um, yeah, I don't even want to do that because I saved somebody for that race. But if we really want to test the theory for science, I'll do it. We'll no. see. Um, anyway, you got my um, vote, Chuck. What else, is, uh, what else is there to talk about? Um, and a whole fucking lot, man. Not a lot. Really yeah. not. Like, like just... I'm, been, I'm really racking my brain trying to oh, figure okay. out. Okay, do we think Martin Truex Jr. is going to win a race? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where? Where? I can't tell you. Chuck, where? You already picked him, so I don't care. The Richmond? Same place I already picked him. Richmond? He's so effing due for another Richmond win. It's not even funny. This feels like the one of those years, though. It just does. Let me look at. Let it me. It feels look. a lot like 2022 to me. I don't think he has two of those within three years. I really don't. If not Richmond, I well, mean, Kevin Harvick did. I know what Buddy's thinking. Buddy's going to pick him this week. Um, <clears throat> wow, what way to go, Sherlock, dumbass! <laughs> like, I mean, if I think he can win Darlington very easily, he can win anywhere. It's just a matter yeah, of he can. can. Yeah, exactly. It's I'm saying like Darlington, Vegas, or Richmond. He wins one of those three. The last yeah. place the Marcel win is Bristol because I think know. out of those it's 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 Richmond because what he has two Darlington wins. In the next gen era, he has one good race there. No, 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 no. no he's got at least two. Oh yeah, he was decent in the spring of twenty three, and then threw it away. Um, going for a stage win, I forgot about that one. Yeah, and then he was a power steering belt away from winning yes. the his other five hundred. I so. remember that. Yes, this wild conversation to be having. So about half. I don't what know. A, dude, nothing happened this week. We have to talk about random stuff. Let's talk about. How about this? Let's talk about Indy. We have okay. been Indy through. That, yeah, what do we think is going to happen? They're going to wreck the dog shit out of some next gen cars. Okay. I think they're going to run a lot of laps without anything happening. Okay, Chuck, why do you think they're going to run a lot, wreck the dog shit out of a bunch of next because shit Because they're going to do exactly what Seth just said. And then two, and then the 2000 and... Well, okay. I don't 17? Know which, I don't know which one I want to pick here. Because the 2017 Brickyard 400 was certainly a thing that happened. But I see sure. a very 2016 uh, Brickyard 400 restart happening where Carl Edwards just ate the shit out of the wall and turned in between one and two and everybody piled in. I see that with like 30 to go. Nothing's happened all day. And Oh, that somehow, never mind. Sorry. And somehow somebody, not going to name any names, is up front that shouldn't be running like row four. And they just make it three wide to one when they really shouldn't. And they turn the guy in the middle and then they just wreck the hell out of some next gen cars. And then they just keep wrecking in the 2017 Brickyard 400 breaks out. That's what I think it is. So is Ross Chastain the guy who makes it three wide? I, I wasn't going to say him. I had another guy in mind. Corey LaJoy. The audacity of you to think that he's going to be on row four on the any restart. I specifically. Yeah, anything can happen and it'll be interesting to see i don't think there's gonna be a lick of tire wear no 
No, there's no shot. I kind of fear that we're gonna have we're gonna blow a lot of right left rears. I kind of think that's left gonna rears. left or right, whichever one they normally blow. I don't know. They normally blow right fronts. Well, well no, I mean to- in the well, next gen era. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I um, think. Uh, I just yeah. I. I think I feel it's, like I almost feel like we're not going to put as much load on the tires. Yeah, it's just it's Indy is such an anomaly, and this car is such an anomaly. It's really hard to hard to kind of handicap this, like because yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'm. I think here's here's what I think is going to happen. I think you're going to see a lot of guys eat the shit out of turns one and three. Because I think they're just going to be well. Either I mean, it could be, you know, you know, any quarter really. I think the guys are they're going to be these guys are going to have to free these damn things up so much to get them to turn through the center that they're. We're, I think it'll be like I think honestly, it could be like an Indy Five Hundred. It could, but also here's the one thing: we've never been to the Brickyard with a properly built race car i guess is the right way to put it um we've always used a traditional stock car yeah so i feel like it'll probably turn better than it has in the past at the brickyard yeah so, yeah but these cars are so snappy like if you get them a little bit too loose it, you're that's either, what i'm saying it'll be yeah, like it, it'll you're be you're there or you're gone like there's no that's, that's what i'm saying i'm thinking it i'm thinking we looks. could i'm thinking we could you know we could see a, a indie car style race in Indy. Obviously, I don't think the draft is going to be. Well, I I don't even know about that. I mean, yeah, it's just going to be. And it the temperature right now it's eighty, but overcast. So, I mean, that's it's not going to be. It's yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I, I yeah, I think I'm leaning towards maybe it'll be more like a Indy five hundred. I think it will. I think it'll be harder to pass than an 8,500. Yeah, I don't think the runs are going to be as big. So, um, but uh, I, I think... Uh, um, I think the leader will be able to get away more, though. I don't think, yeah. Well, I don't even know. We see with this car sometimes. Yeah. That... Especially if the guy I think is going to run well today or this weekend ends up in front. He has a history of overcooking it. And then... Tear yeah. shit up. Who are you talking about? I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we'll also wreck a lot of next gen cars. Not for the same reasons Chuck thinks, but although I am for Carl Edward coming back and eating shit out of the wall. Um, All right. Here's my <laughs> official prediction 156 laps with two cautions, those being the stage cautions, which are, of course, gross and should never happen. Um, and then hang on, lap- hang on, hang on. We can't just ignore the, the first. 15 minutes of this podcast. It'd be first three cautions, and two stage cautions in the Corey Lichoy. I was getting there. Okay. All right. 156 laps with two you cautions. You think he's going to go 156 laps without wrecking that damn thing? I think I think we'll be sitting there one... We'll be in the stands freaking out like, oh my God, Corey Lejoy is going to go an entire race without wrecking. And as soon as we say he that, could be on, right, he could up. be on the front shut stretch up. coming to the checkered flag, and I still wouldn't believe he's not going to wreck. In front of our faces, turn one, lap 157, Corey LaJoy is going to do a complete pirouette and just kill the turn one wall. Flames erupt. <laughs> like, we're, we're in shock and awe. And, well, of I course, guess. he gets out, um, which is, of course, great, I guess. Um and okay. then we rack we them up, stack them. <laughs> we rack them up, stack them up, and run about. Oh, Larson and Denny <laughs> Hamlin wreck each other They're on the front row. And Ty Gibbs wins the. <laughs> no, I'm, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Um, that actually seems like a. Yeah, write that one down. Yeah, <laughs> that might be. Yeah. That down. Yeah, we can write it down, know. but that's not that's not my yeah. official prediction. I now, don't know. now Corey LaJoy wrecking spectacularly in front of us. I'm not going to bet on it, but like, yeah. it'd be kind of funny. Okay, 
Um, I think we've I think we've we've beat the horse to death. Uh, I got one more question before we get to accolades. Um, what's our opinion on NASCAR in Indianapolis? Do we need to be there? Yep. Because. Yeah, my lost money. Oh well. It's the most important racetrack in America and quite possibly the world. Okay. Chuck. He said it. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Um, I don't think we necessarily need to be on the oval, though. I don't. Uh, this is the problem. I think we need to be on the oval if we're going to be there. But I don't. I'm not. Conv- I'm not saying we don't need to be there. I'm. Just, well, I am saying we don't need to be there. I'm not saying I don't want us there. It's just I don't. Like I said, I've been. I'm. We'll see how this race goes. But uh, I don't know. I, I said it a while back. I'm disenchanted with the idea of NASCAR at Indianapolis because I mean, what we've been we've doing this, this is the thirtieth Brickyard for well, I guess the twenty seventh Brickyard four hundred. And I, you know, I haven't been really any good ones. So I don't know. Well, I mean, um, obviously it's one of those things where NASCAR would survive without Indianapolis and Indianapolis would survive without NASCAR. So technically based off the question, do they need each other? No. Do I think it adds credibility to NASCAR to be able to go to Indianapolis? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, in a, especially in a day and age where we're lacking definitely lacking some credibility at times. I think it's good yeah. to be able to go to a world-class facility like Indianapolis. Um, obviously, I love going to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's definitely one of my top three favorite racetracks that I get to go to uh, on a yearly basis. Um, but, yeah, so technically, no, they don't need to go there. Even if the racing sucks, I would like to see it. Again, I don't particularly care which course it's on i honestly wouldn't mind switching back and forth so the brickyard 400 was like a big event every year or every time it came around because it wasn't every year i don't think that's another question i was gonna ask is this is the brickyard is this is it a crown jewel again or is it it ain't top four i think it's the fourth but it's not top four in terms of nascar the, the only reason it's a crown jewel is because it's Indianapolis. The Bristol Night Race is a bigger NASCAR crown jewel than the Breakdown 400 is. It's fair. The top three are set in stone. The top three are set in stone. We know what yes. they are. I don't um, know if I agree with that. But also, part of it being a part of something... Okay, look. As someone who feels like the Bristol Night Race is not respected enough as in the crown jewel conversation, I do agree with you um, in, in some regard. But also, Indianapolis pays a fuck ton which cannot be disregarded when talking about yeah. annual events. And every driver in the field would love to go Chris, kiss the bricks. And not Bingo. that every driver Bingo. wouldn't, not that every driver wouldn't want to raise the sword at Bristol, but there's something different about winning at IMS than Bristol Motor Speedway. And I love Bristol Motor Speedway. It's not the same. It's not the same. You live forever beneath the pagoda. I don't know that you live a little bit forever beneath the Colossus. All I'm saying is Bristol Night Race doesn't have to be a good race to be special. Apparently, well, the Rachel wasn't a good enough race. Uh, you know what? He's got a point. That is fair. That is fair. Um, trust me. One, 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 like, that yeah, the Bristol, Bristol, Bristol doesn't... Bristol didn't have to be... <laughs> wasn't quite good enough for <laughs> it to have to... Um, there for a while and that's fair but i'm not talking about the spring race i'm saying the bristol night race could suck for the rest of time and they'll never i'm just saying it's a it's a funny uh it's a funny little i know but correlation there um anyway accolades uh sundress dumbass <clears throat> i'm gonna have to go first on sundress i was yeah. starving <laughs> uh, um i'll go with uh Oh, I got it, dumbass. I don't have a sundress. Well, yeah, dumbass was easy. Yeah, I think um, we can do. I can think. I think we get three, two, one. That one, and just say it. I mean, like, Corey, Corey, Corey LaJoy is the gimme, but yeah. yeah. Um, 
I yeah, I don't really I can't think of a sundress from this weekend at all. I got a sundress. Go um, ahead. For finally showing up again. And no. uh, <laughs> just no dumbass. Um the bar is not that low, Chuck. No, um like the uh the camera shot of like the sun shining through Corey Himes truck at the end of the truck race on Friday was really cool. That was that cool. would have required me to watch the truck race. Dude, I didn't I watch, didn't watch it and I saw that shot. Sure, and it was okay. like I don't know. It was you know, I'll have to show it to you. You'll have to look it up. It was actually pretty cool. I don't know how to explain it, but it was badass. That's my sundress. Yeah. You know, that, was, that could be you know, I'll take your word for it. Unanimous sundress, the fucking photographer. Um we all know Corey enjoys his dumbass. Does anybody have any other dumbass? Me, I do, because I went to Bowen Gray. Uh, and there's plenty of them there, but I'll have to have you. You for going to Bowman Gray? <laughs> uh, no, I will. I had to check it off the list, and it's entertaining. I'll give. I'll give it that. Um, I'll have to send you the clip and have you overlay it because there was a guy. I don't know what they call this division. They have special names for their divisions. First race, this guy works him over for. It was third, and the guy in front of him spun out by himself. So second for like seven laps, clean, never really touched him. The guy that spun out, Corey LaJoy? No. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the only track Corey's actually good at. Uh, um, my, fa- my fault, G. So, <laughs> so let me put some respect on the boy. Second, clean for like seven laps, gets to his inside off four. The guy that's getting past pumps the brakes and completely right hooks this motherfucker into the outside wall going into one. Oh, like, uh, that right. was Corey Joy. <laughs> and I was like, Dad and I were like, what? What? What was that for? What was the point of that? And then he gets out. He drives over the guardrail, drives around the corner, he gets out and waves to everybody and then flips everybody off. And I was like, okay, that guy's a clown. Um, so I flipped him off back. Um, Okay, cool. Yep. I'm sorry. Let me put some more respect on Corey Joy. He also did win at Pocono in an ARCA race. Wow. Yeah. Actually, I take back everything I've ever said yeah. about Corey LaJoy. That wow. is incredible. Was that back when they were running the the right rear perpendicular to the right to the left front in an ARCA race at Pocono? Probably, yeah. It's the car um, like that. Yeah, it's called Skew Chuck. Um I Oh, okay. Honorary dumbasses from the cup race are uh, Carson Hosfar and Todd Gilliland, who continued to get in a pissing contest for, I believe that was like 23rd. Where else did they get in a pissing contest? Um, Nashville. Nashville. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, they both look like goofy ass dumbasses. And uh, here's a uh, here's a dumbass. Um, whoever, you know, decide, whoever um came up with the traffic plan getting into Pocono. Mm, yeah, that's a good one. No, yeah. who's really a dumbass? I'm sorry to anybody. Uh whoever left late to go to Pocono is I mean, a dumbass. That, that too. Yeah. Like holy fuck. No later than eight thirty you should be getting to that track. Well to remember that for next year or the year after whenever we go to Pocono so we fucking will. <laughs> all right. But um all right. Uh, picks for uh, Indianapolis. Uh, Chuck, you won the picks at uh, Pocono. Um, for everybody that doesn't know, since I wasn't on the show, I texted them and told them that I was picking Denny Hamlin. I saved it, so we have the receipts. So, that's how I won. Um, this week, I... this just feels like a race. It will be a race. That uh, big time Ross Chastain to get out front and just air block the hell out of everybody for 30 laps. I mean, honestly, though, like, yeah, I could see it. I mean, because, like, let's be real. If you pit for tires, you're going to be my dumbass next week. I'm sorry. Like, I track position is going to be pivotal. Like, and it's going to be pivotal. Be set. That guy. Like, no like, tires, Rolls. Just go block. Yeah. And, okay. and, and Matt Swiderski or whatever the fuck his name is on the top of the 99 box is going to watch the one do that and be like, huh, nah, dude, four tires, baby. We'll drive from 31st to win the thing. You know who I know for sure is taking four tires? Cliff fucking Daniels. No, the 41 car. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Chad Johnston, four tires and fuel, baby. Any incident. Dude, I'm still not over the, I think it was 2018 Brickyard 400 where Kyle was running like sixth and then caution came out with like four to go and Chad Johnston's stupid ass came in and put four tires and fuel on it when no one else even pitted and they wound up like 28. That shit pissed me off so bad. What if Ryan Priest won on a pit call this Dude, weekend? I will... <laughs> <laughs> Don't anyway, you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. That's or wait, who did I, I picked Eric Jones? So wherever the oh. hell he finished compared to wherever the hell your guy finished, I I picked Tyler Reddick. So I'm I'm willing to bet Reddick beat I'm him. I'm willing to bet that Jones too. Um, beat, so. Who oh, did? shit. Jones? Jones? Jones finished 14, so let me check. I, no, yeah, I was I'm about to say, I don't... Pick. Yeah, I was about to say, Redick I don't... Finished, Redick finished sixth, so... Okay, okay. cool. All right, uh, I'm picking Chase Elliott. Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> confetti. <laughs> oh, I forgot he's racing. I was I, like... Dude, I, I contemplated okay. picking Jimmy Johnson, but <laughs> I, I'm a little bit too involved with winning these picks, so... Yeah, I I'm don't like, care anymore. I was like, fuck it, dude. We're picking Jimmy Jam. <laughs> Buddy was definitely picking Martin Truex until I said it. No, I, I'm saving Truex for somewhere else. I, I was thinking about picking it. Yeah, why would you waste Martin Truex at Brickyard when you can have him at Richmond in just three weeks? Just because we're going. And, well, I mean, we're going to Richmond, too. But, I mean, it just we seems like... We were at the last like, Richmond race, and he... It just seems like I'd go all, we'd go all the way to Indy for the Brickyard and fucking Martin Truex would win. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's That's all we have. That is, uh, this has been the Big Motor Small Blade Podcast. He's been Buddy. He's all the other. He has been Chuck, and I've been Seth. And we had a viewing experience uh, with Pocono. And we're going to have... Go fuck an- yourselves. Yeah. That. That.